The game's director has told me this is the hardest event he's ever organized in 24 years at the IOC. Tokyo has had to deal with an unprecedented number of hurdles. For instance, the cost factor itself. Delaying the games has already added billions of dollars to the price. One Oxford study said it's the most expensive summer games in history. <clears throat> then the safety. The IOC has had to make plans for COVID outbreaks amongst the athletes specific to every single sport and event unique to those events. And third, the complicating factor is still emerging. For instance, the Delta variant, which the director says there are extra layers of rules for countries to follow if they've been hit by the Delta variant. And so to my exclusive interview with Doobie, where he was confident, he says, once these games are underway, all the hard work will have been proven to have been worth it. It's the hardest thing because it is the most complex. So it is the, the hardest thing, uh, uh, Richard. At the same time, we have we have quality of, of people here and in, in institutions that, that are just stunning. So, one question, which I sort of, I ask with a certain obviousness, but is it worth it? I mean, the, the somersaults to get these Olympics up and running, and I know that people in Japan are now more in favour of it than they were, the mood is shifting towards it, but is it worth going through these, these gymnastics, if you will, just to have a sporting event when the world is facing such a pandemic. You see, I was I was uh, reflecting about about this moment, which which for me is always um, is always uh, defining for for the rest of, of the world, and that's the the ten second count to the opening ceremony. We all have that that souvenir of of being there when when the games will open. And they open to what? They open to the world gathering at one place, in one stadium. And this is the world united behind their, their colors, their uniforms, their music, their pride. And this is priceless. To see that, to see the, the, the athletes coming in as one is something that is absolutely unique. Then, of course, we do it for, for the athletes, but we do it for the symbolism of having the whole world together in Tokyo on the 23rd of July. And yes, it is most definitely worth it. You obviously have a plan for an outbreak of COVID. And obviously, that plan cannot mean the whole thing has to shut down because there's an outbreak in the swimming pool or amongst the swimmers or, the, or amongst the gymnastics or amongst the marathon runners or whatever. What is that plan? Uh, the, the plan here is, uh, is to identify first in, in every single sport and in every discipline what the rules are and, and how they do apply in a, a case of a positive athlete. And, and this has been very well trained and, and rehearsed in the context of, uh, of more than, than 400 uh, events at, at international level, 54,000 athletes have competed at the highest level. And here we've learned a lot. Now, the complexity here is that once you have each and every sport, then they do not all have the same rules. But what is really important is to identify what happens in case there is an athlete that becomes positive. What's, what's the sequence? in order to, uh, to identify the close contacts, what happens to the close contacts, how do you analyze the, the close contacts so that if they are not at risk, they can continue the competition. So yes, all this is absolutely planned to, 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 to the minute detail. Right, because if you come into contact with somebody who's got it, but you are fully vaccinated, there's an R, yeah, you, you carry on. And, and there, there it's very interesting because you carry on, but vaccination does not mean that you're protected 100%. So you still have to go through the rigor of, of PCR testing, nasopharyngeal each and every day to demonstrate that, yes, you were a close contact, but your health condition is such that you do not present a risk for the other competitors, so you're free to go. And, and to do that, to make that judgment call, we have a range of, of experts from around the globe that are, that are gathering here, and every time we'll have a case, they will help the authorities here to determine what happens next. I see that you're, you're forecasting 
vaccinated by, uh, at this particular point. I'm surprised that that number is so low. I would have thought that anybody coming, even remotely, who had an opportunity of coming to Tokyo would have been vaccinated. Now, the, the, the issue here is uh, what, what you see in uh, in day to day life, which is in some countries, it is very complicated to access to vaccination. So we made a great effort to seek assistance from different countries and different manufacturers to organize uh, where, where we could a system of hubs where those that do not have vaccination in their country could go to these hubs and get their two shots. So it was uh, of, of immense magnitude, and that number reflects actually something that is much bigger than what happens in civil society for the reason that, that you just mentioned. Everybody wanted to be vaccinated. And, and again, in some countries, you simply don't have vaccination. You don't have access to vaccination. So something had to be done here. How worried are you about the Delta variant. And I'm not sure why one well, necessarily in your case would be more worried about that than anybody else. You know, you don't want virus at all, let alone the Delta variant. But has the Delta variant added a new wrinkle to the planning? You have to be able to uh, uh, to adjust your plans and make sure that, that then the information is, is clear, which is not easy, because the rules that were applying to everyone suddenly you add on top an, a layer of additional rules, and that, that has to be explained through a system where you have thousands of individuals that will be impacted. And as a result, what you have is that those uh, nations affected by the variant have extra layers of, of rules that they will have to follow. But with, with again, the rigor and, and the detail of the planning that has been done, that complexity can be absorbed. Wow. This is... This is beyond complicated. This is three-dimensional chess with uh, overtones on it, isn't it? You, you can look at it from the, uh, the other perspective. Uh, it, it is the uh, ultimate challenge and the ultimate reward. Again, the 10 second count. Where will you be? And you will remember that moment. And the closing ceremony, everybody will remember that moment. Will we have full stadium? No. Will we have, though, the whole world into the stadiums and the energy of the stadiums back to the world? Absolutely. So complex, yes, but so was the effort of the collective memory we're creating here.